Hey guys, Jason CV Customs. I'm actually tying this to the front of the video. We're going to talk about the problems with the common rail, but there, there's two questions I missed and I want to make sure I get it out for you. Number one, let's get out here. A lot of you guys who watch all my videos know that uh, I'm in California and California's on fire. We are actually fine. We're safe. We're, we're in the Central Valley. We, we don't, uh, we're not anywhere near all that fire hazard, but our sky has looked like this for a solid week. Um, actually, let me see if I can show you the sun. Oh, well, it was up just a second ago. You could see it. It was like a little red dot, like right about there. But uh, yeah, three weeks, it's looked like that. Um, another thing, we're talking about the 12 of Now, we're going to get right to the video, and, and you'll see what we're talking about. One of the big things I didn't key in on, and... It has to do with me being like a big gearhead and a lot of my uh, my viewers and I, I talked to some of the viewers because I got a lot of people's phone numbers and one of the key things I missed is, uh, so this engine failed. The check engine light was not on, but it, ha it, it was not running right and I think that's one of the big things to the uh, problem with the uh, diesels is that People have been trained to rely on the check engine light. If there's a problem, the light's going to be on. Not always the case with a diesel. The check engine light's primarily for emissions, and it, it's not really going to tell you anything as far as when an injector's failing and, th and things like that. So I'm going to let you go. We'll get right to the video. You'll, you'll hear me go again, but I, I really wanted to throw those two things in. I'm fine, and check engine light's not going to tell you everything. So... All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Hey, guys. Jason with CB Customs. We're getting ready to pull this engine. We've already got things going on here. <clears throat> it's the end of the day, but I, I did a video on why I bought the truck to rebuild the engine and all that stuff, and everybody keeps asking me, why do these engines fail? Specifically, we're talking about the common rails, and the long answer is... There, there's a lot of different reasons. The short answer is a lot simpler. Now, these engines are great motors. Um, that's why I bought it. This, I mean, this this build right here is for me. I'm, I'm keeping this truck. These engines will do a lot. I think the simplest way to explain why they fail is people who don't understand diesels are driving them. And that doesn't mean that they can't drive them, but it's not... Everybody's been just programmed on how to drive a gas engine and, and there's things that happen to a gas engine that don't really affect it when there's a problem like uh, for instance right now we're talking about the common rail the big downfall to these engines it's it's the injectors and when they fail the engine still runs because the engine is like solid so it, it'll just keep working so people keep driving it they know it's not running right they know it's not performing like it should, but they keep driving it because it keeps running. I think that's the shortest answer to why these things fail. It's, it's not the engine. It's that something happened and normally it's a failed injector. So an injector fails and they don't stop driving it. Um, there are some other things that I've also seen. I mean, I, I do about one of these a month, sometimes two a month. And it, it gets busy, but for the most part, it's usually one a month and, and, and that's, I, I can keep up with that, but the, uh, oh, hang on. Sorry guys, I had to sneeze. It was coming. Um, yeah, the, one, one of the other things that I always see on any engine I rebuild, um, generally the mileage is somewhere between 250 and 350. Uh, that longevity is not all that bad, but uh, they also always have tuners on them. I've, I've never had an engine come in that didn't have tuner. Now, does correlation equal causation? I don't know. Does that mean that their engine failed because it had a tuner? I don't know. Um, but 90%, like 90%. I, I honestly think in the last year, I've had one that came in here that didn't have a tuner on it. But that doesn't mean that it didn't have a tuner. It means when they brought it to me, they there was no tuner on it. Um, 
doesn't mean that that's what's causing the problems. Um, generally, the ones that are coming in are 03s, 04s. Um, and that could just be the age. They're, they're a little older, they got a little more mileage, all that fun stuff. Um, I have do, I've, I've done two 06s in the last, th this one's an 06, in the last uh, year and a half. And again, it's the same problem. The injectors fell and they drive them anyways and, and it just shoots the engine. Um, but it doesn't stop there. So we've got uh, injectors, we've got the tuner. Another big thing is people upgrade the air box and they think, all right, I, I put a new, uh, a new air filter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna breathe better, all these fun things. Then they never clean it. So the Cummins works primarily on compression. If you get dust in the engine, it's done. So it, if, if you let your air filter get plugged up, and I'm, I'm not saying don't change your air filter. I'm, I'm not a anti air filter guy or aftermarket air filters. The aftermarket air filters are actually really good. But if you don't clean them, they're not doing what it is you're trying to do. Yes, they're going to breathe better. But I mean, you got to really think about what that means. Breathing better means that more air is getting in. Well, how do they accomplish that? They accomplish that by giving you more surface area so they can still filter the air, but get more in. If it starts to get plugged up, that thing starts to collapse. I've seen K&Ns that look like uh, accordions because they're sucked in so bad and people are still driving those trucks. You gotta clean them. Again, I'm not saying don't get a K&N, not saying any of that. I'm saying keep it clean. If you're gonna do that air box. Okay, and then an another thing, you know, again, fuel injector, air cleaner, tuner, not to sound too much like an old man, but another big problem is kids start driving these trucks and because they perform so well, they think it's a race car. Um, I've actually got a buddy who's got an 03 and he raced a Hellcat and I mean, he actually, he won, <laughs> but his truck was built to do it. These trucks, they'll put out a lot and with a simple tuner, you can, you can just insanely flatten a lot of competition but you get younger kids in them and they hot rod i was there once and i'm not super old but you know when i was in high school i mean you put me in something with some power and i, I want to go right I'm not faulting them for it that's not it at all but they're not made to be ran that way i mean these are they're trucks they're, they're work trucks they're, they're gonna do what you want they're gonna pull what you want they, you got to take care of them. Maybe, maybe that's exactly where we'll uh, just say the bottom line is. They've got to be taken care of. At the end of the day, it's a tool. And, and if you don't take care of your tools, they're not going to take care of you. So really what it comes down to is improper maintenance. Um, not knowing a lot about the vehicle. I, I, I don't really know where else to, to put it. I mean, everything that I've explained falls into those categories, improper maintenance and lack of knowledge of your tool, your vehicle. Um, again, that, that might just come down to that the diesels came on the market, they're more fuel efficient, they're more powerful, they perform better, but there was never an education for people to understand what a diesel does differently from a gas engine and the things you gotta watch in driving a diesel. Okay, one thing I didn't touch on, we kind of wrapped it up, uh, an education's needed, great. Um, fuel additives, it's, it's another big thing that a lot of people ask about. I got a lot of friends who swear by them. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you with my, with my 7.3, my 7.3, it's a, a 99. I've never used fuel additives and that thing runs like a top. It's at like 400,000 miles. Now it works a lot differently from these common rails in that it uses oil pressure to tell the injector to fire, right? <clears throat> now these, they don't use oil pressure to tell the injector to fire. They use electricity. And uh, the, the 06, for example, the 06 has three different stages of that injection. 
Will fuel additive help it? I've seen a lot of forums, talk to a lot of people about that, and it's very mixed reviews. I will tell you that I'm going to be running additives in this because it's got the, the, the three uh, event injectors and it, it just seems like the right way to go. And another thing about the common rails is at 200,000 miles, no matter what, I'd be changing the injectors. I've just, I've seen too many of them. Maybe that's something you should understand. When the injector fails, what happens is you get extra diesel into the cylinders. When that extra diesel gets into the cylinders, it does what we call washing the cylinders. It washes the cylinders and then the, um, the piston rings, because there's no lubrication that, that, that fuel's just going down the side of the rings, it scratches the side of the cylinder wall and it destroys all compression on that cylinder. It's usually number five. I would have thought number six. Most of the engines I pull apart, it's number five. I, I don't know why, but you know, again, that's, Another story for another time. It's usually number five, but any filled injector is going to do that. And when it washes that cylinder, you lose that compression, you get that miss, you get all that stuff. If you saw the video before, you, you saw how this thing was running, you smelt the fuel. Well, I smelt the fuel. You heard about me smelling the fuel coming out the back of the pipe. That's what happens. So that's why it's important to keep the injector running properly. So when you hear people talking about the additive, is it great? Is it not? I don't know. I, I didn't need it on the 7.3. Um, you know, the, the DT-466 we run, it, it didn't need it. You know, the older, like, tractor diesel engines didn't need it. These more advanced, again, it's still, it's still a 5.9 block. It's still the same engine, but the fueling system's completely different. The head's redesigned. If it comes down to it and that injector added or you know fuel additive is going to save the injector, it's not that expensive. And with the fuel mileage these things get, you're not adding a whole lot to it. And for me, when I finish this truck, I will be using the additive. But again, uh, like I said, it's it's mixed reviews. So, anyway, so that's 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 the whole scoop that's that's why i think these engines fail again they don't fail a lot they don't fail often they're super reliable if you maintain them it's a great truck it's a great engine it's a great platform it's probably one of the best pickup platforms on the market and you know i'm i'm a, I'm a guy who has diesels i've, I've got my 73 i've got the 466 i've got diesels everywhere i've even got an idi sitting out there um that one's it's a 69 idi but it's still 73 or you know same idea as a 7.3, but it's the smaller one. I, I, I run a lot of diesels, and I'm not partial to either one. I, I'm on, Honestly, if you, if you watch my channel, you know I'm an international guy, so I really like the 7.3, but Cummins is really, in my opinion, the best, and that's why I keep going towards Cummins. I want to put Cummins in most of my vehicles when I, when I modify my trucks. That's why I bought this truck. 06, very specific for a lot of reasons that we covered in the other uh, video. This is a great truck, not worried about it, but know why they fail if, you know, if you're going to run it. And then also, if, uh, if you guys are interested in this truck, we are doing a, uh, a series on rebuilding this engine. Uh, next step, I'm going to get this engine out. But like I said, I was getting a lot of questions on why they fail. That's why they fail. This one's at 275. Honestly, it's right in that window for most of the trucks I see. So if you guys like it, go ahead and uh, watch the rest of the videos. Hit that bell so you see uh, the notifications when the other videos are coming up. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next video.